All right, so here's my Super Cub. I'm setting it up. Um, I made a few changes. So I should have started here. Uh, this is with a toolkit that it comes with. Uh, and I actually, I, uh, I put my uh, flat tire repair kit back on here. So the, the rope plugs, right? the rope plugs, the, uh, the reamer, and the uh, rope plug tool. Put it back in here. The reason why I did that was because they're all kind of flat. I wanted to have quick, easy access to this. Um, so that way I don't have to like take off anything, you know, before I had that in my tool bag and I actually also changed my tool bag because if I had that in here, I'm going to have to take everything off here and because I'm not, I plan on stacking all the tires and everything on here and I'll show you that in a, in a moment. But anyway, so yeah, so flat tire repair, put it back in there. I added this little, uh, uh, aerator, circulator, whatever they call it. I forgot where, where I got this. I think I got it on Amazon or maybe eBay. But anyways, it's like a mesh. The whole thing's like a mesh. Uh, so that way it keeps my ass cool, right? Because I know I'm gonna be in the heat, riding in the heat, and your ass gets all sweaty. Uh, so it help keep my ass cool, but also it, hopefully it help uh, release some of the pressure points where your sit bones are. You know, there's two sides right here where your sit bones are. That's that. Uh, I have my gas tank uh, bungeed in here, and it's holding pretty well. This is actually how I bungeed it when I when I bought this bike um, in Arkansas and I rode it back to California. I did it just like that, and it worked just fine uh, over here and I won't be having to set up uh, on the way to Maine but on the way back on the actual cannonball I'm gonna have this right here so I'm gonna have uh, I have the cannonball booklet but I'm also gonna have some paper um, I printed out some directions from from Google Maps so this is basically my very last resort backup uh, obviously I have my phone and actually I, I just I spent like over four hours today downloading uh, Yes, do, basically doing my navigation, that downloading all the uh, the route, uh, the the route the route for my uh, for the for the cannonball. Uh, you know, I ju adjusted it around and tried to make it shorter a shorter distance. Um, so I, I basically I sent that to myself, and I didn't even know that you could do that. You could do that on the uh, on uh, Google Map. I just discovered it today because this is the first time I really really played with Google Maps. I'm mean, usually I just punch into the address and that's it and I don't do anything else but but I uh I discovered something new today so it took me like over four hours almost five hours I think anyways so I used rubber bands instead of a string and I have a whole bunch of these rubber bands so I, I bought a whole bunch of them to uh, just in case if these ones rip I could just easily pop on another one because rubber bands are easy to tie right they actually they're loop they're looped around the uh, hand guard so they're just dangling here so anyways uh you know I won't have this on until cannonball and this is just only a backup uh let's see what else uh down here oh actually yeah so let's look in the in my trunk bag here actually let me zoom out oops how do i zoom out oh i can't zoom out well that sucks why can't i zoom out okay anyways so I changed the uh, I changed the uh, tool bag. So I'm using my old tool bag that I used for all these years. I changed it because you know in this trunk top box, you know it's not gonna get wet. So so I'm not worried about you know water getting in. So I don't need the dry bag. The dry bag is for if I kept the the tool bag outside. Originally I was gonna put the tool bag right in here, right where the uh, gas tank is. But but the reason why I put the gas tank back here was because I want to have quick access to the gas tank so that way I could just take it off real fast fill it up and put it back here I don't have to do anything else because prior to this I was gonna I was planning on putting the gas tank up here and I and I also have my tires and all this other stuff that if I did gas tank up here that means I have to like unstrap a bunch of other stuff and this and that and it's just too much work takes too much time so this is the quickest method it's right here so so anyways uh two back here and added a few more things you know in here in my sock here is, is my little mini funnel uh, right here, I have my little uh, soapy water sweat bottle. And these two little, you know, basically, I, got, I went to the dollar store and got these two, two little bags or two, two little bottles. That's a little bit of extra oil because you know when you ride long distances on a small little air cool bike, you do burn oil. Even though the oil I'm using right now, and I just I just changed the oil yesterday. The oil I'm using right now is a uh, um, Motu, Moto Motu. Um, I think it's I can't remember the number, but anyways, it's a synthetic uh, ester based synthetic. Uh, it, it is a 1060, I believe, and the reason why I have that is because that's when that's what I used in my Moto Guzzi when I had a Moto Guzzi, 
not so long ago. So I still have some of that stuff left. So that's what I put in there. Uh, I added this little strap here. Um, so this this will help me uh, if I need a need a help uh, need a need to uh, change my tire and and I can't get the the uh, the bead to uh, the bead on the tire here to to uh, sit in inside the channel of the rim where where it seals. So so that's the strap here. The strap here, you know, you wrap around the outside of the tire to squeeze the tire in, so that way it uh, holds it holds the air, so that way you can pump it up. So so I added that. So that makes a difference when you need it. Uh, my little bag of toiletries. Okay, so so I'm gonna be hoteling it, so I don't need soap, soap or shampoo. So so I have you know t some extra TP. You never know you need TP. My shaver, obviously. Toothbrush, toothpaste, Q-tips. Uh, I think I have a nail clipper in here somewhere. My face wash. So you know toiletries, and it's always a good idea to keep toiletries in a mesh bag. That way it, it, it uh, dries out. This is my two uh, extra air filter. So, so since I was doing the, the route planning today, uh, I saw where I'm gonna change this. So I mentioned in a previous video, when I get to Maine, I'm gonna put on a new one because my uh, original one, original air filter on here, it already has, you know, almost 4,000 miles. Actually, let's look at my mileage here. Uh, I have a total of, total of 3847. So basically, uh, Almost four, a little shy of four thousand miles. Um, so, anyways, um, so yeah, so the air filter. So I will put a new one on when I get to Maine. So by the time I get to Maine, let's say I, my bike has about four thousand miles. So by the time I get to Maine, it will have at least eight thousand miles. I'm thinking probably about eight thousand miles, uh, maybe even longer or more. Uh, so I'm gonna put a new air filter when I get to uh, Bar Harbor. So I'm gonna use that air filter all the way until the sixth day of Cannonball, the end of the sixth day of Cannonball. Uh, then I will put on the another one. Uh, on the sixth day of Cannonball, there's gonna be a lot of dirt roads, so for sure that's gonna get clogged up. And I think on the seventh day and maybe even eighth day, there's some some dirt roads as well, but not as much as the sixth day though. I think the sixth day has the most. So anyways, those two should be enough, along with the one that's already on here. Uh, right here, this is my laptop. I was debating if I should bring this, but. I'm gonna be gone for a month. You know, I'm leaving tomorrow morning. Uh, I'm waking up six o'clock in the morning and uh, and uh, um, leaving at seven. Hopefully, I'm trying to set this schedule: wake up at six and leave at seven, because that's gonna be my cannonball schedule. So that way, I get used to waking up early and you know going to the East Coast. I'm losing three hours, so I have to get used to that as well. Because uh, I'm you know I'm a late sleeper. I, I usually don't wake up until at least nine o'clock in the in the uh, in the morning. So. So for you know nine o'clock in the morning here, that would be uh, noon on the East Coast. So I have to basically get used to waking up six hours earlier. So that's gonna, you know, that's why I want to start now. Uh, gradually, by the time I get there, you know, in two weeks, um, I should hopefully be used to it. Uh, anyways, so that's that. Uh, I'll actually have a little bit more space here. The space here is gonna be my clothes. I'm gonna bring five T-shirts. You know, five T-shirts, five underwear, probably at least half a dozen socks you could never have too much socks uh just in case you know if you could do a water crossing or whatever or something you know shit happens when you need more socks I mean, shit happens when you, you might need more underwear too but uh that's what the tp is for right um and i'm probably gonna wear my shorts in here and i might wear a pair of jeans too maybe both you know bring both so where is that um Let's look at my, my riding gear. I have some lightweight winter gloves. I mean, winter gloves, I mean uh, um, summer gloves. Those are my lightweight summer gloves. These are my old winter gloves. These are really worn out. I mean, this, these ones I have, I've had these for ones for over 15 years and they have all these holes in them. Uh, this is probably gonna be la the last year that I'm gonna use them. So this is my, you know, so they're not really that thick anymore. They lost a lot of the insulation properties. So they're good for like, not necessarily really cold, but you know, cool, cooler weather, it should be okay. Uh, same thing with these gloves too. These gloves are really busted up and banged up. So uh, these ones are all worn out. So I think these two pair of gloves, by the time I get back, I'm probably gonna toss these or donate them or something. Uh, I'm gonna have my uh, camel back here. My camel back's gonna strap onto the back of the, um, into the back here, along with my tires. And I'll show you guys that in a moment. 
I uh, got a whole bunch of bungee cords and I'm gonna bungee everything down, bungee the, the camelback down, bungee my uh, my tires down. Um, everything's bungee. So in my camelback, I have a one and a half liter bladder, one and a half liter bladder. And here I have my uh, um, my rain cover. And it's just, you know, it's not it's not most cycle specific. It's just, you know, outdoor uh, rain gear. So, and I, and, you know, I'm a small guy, so I bought these in large, so that way I can fit it over my riding gear. Uh, you know, over here, I have some bunch of earplugs. Uh, oh, one of the things I did here, besides this bunch of setup here, is I have this little uh, pin. This is for my, uh, for the for the phone, you know, so if I need to use the phone, touch screen, you know, with the gloves, the gloves can't activate the touch screens, but that's what this is for. And I have it on a rubber band because I prefer that instead of a string. Uh, again, you know, rubber bands fast. I could, you know, tie on a rubber band real quick. That's why I, have, I, bought, I bought a whole bunch of extra rubber bands. Um, back here again. So there's some extra pins. I, I, bought, I actually bought a whole pack of 10 of these things. They were pretty cheap. So got that. Let's see what else is in here. You know, earplugs. Here's my uh, my uh, tire pressure gauge. I have another one in the tool bag. Let's see what else do I have in here. I might add some, a few other stuff. Oh, I have my tripod. I'm bringing it with me a tripod and and obviously this right here is a camera mount for a smartphone so that way i can take pictures of myself you know kind of like a sort of a selfie shoot selfie almost sort of like well you know with a base right here this is a tripod base yeah, tri tripod base like so so I screw it on right here and you got a a tripod so that way i could you know take a picture of myself with the bike and everything so that's that let's look at my riding gear over here so here i'm using I'm using my old Revit. Uh, I can't remember what which model this is, but this this is probably four years old, maybe or more, at least four or five years old. Probably more than five years old, maybe maybe even six years old. So both top and bottom. So I really like Revit gear. Revit gear is like really high quality. Uh, they fit great. They fit me really well. They work really well. Um, these ones are obviously. Uh, mesh but they have that insulation you know the insulation uh, this thing doesn't have the waterproofing so that's why I have my, my outdoor waterproof gear All right so this one fits me really well and you know and they zip into each other the only thing I don't like about this for everyone I'm, I'm, and I don't know if they improved it or not since since I since I purchased these ones but uh, but what I don't like is that this insulation right here you see how it's elastic on the bottom when I wear this you know as I as I'm riding this elastic will actually ride up up my waist, and the elastic will end up right at the bottom, of, right at the bottom of my uh, rib cage. So basically, my belly section is all exposed because because uh, you know because because it's elastic, and and my, I guess my, my belly, I, depending on how how much I ate, I might you know yeah, the belly is the the bigger part, so it rides up the top of the belly where it's a little bit more narrow, I guess. Uh, so so I don't like that. Um, that's the only downside to this that I'm like. Besides that, it works really well. Um, let's see what else do I have? Oh, and I have here my uh, my heated my heated uh, uh, my electric heated uh, gerbing uh, jacket liner. I've I, I've had these these things for like oh geez probably since uh, when maybe 2008 2009 somewhere in that time time frame maybe 2010 I forget. So I've had these for over a decade and they still work really well. And here's my plug and my plug goes goes directly. I don't you know I don't have a power control switch. All the switches that I have, you know, the on off switches, they all you know, they don't last very long. because uh, I because I commute, right? So I, I ride you around. So my those switches usually only last me about two seasons. So I usually just plug this plug directly into my uh, into my uh, into the bike plug. So I have the, the plug right here. So this is what that is. That's my for my electric uh, jacket liner. Um, so I got that. Um, let's see what else do I have. Um, yeah, so that's it for now. Then I show you some more stuff once once I stack up everything on here, and I show you how that looks like when it when it's all stacked up. All right, so uh, I've got to show this. I also have uh, uh, for hot weather, I have the evaporative cooling uh, vest. So you put this in cold water, and it absorbs the water. And uh, 
when you put it on and as it dry or as yeah as it evaporates it dries you know it cools you and this is a little um neck gaiter i guess you could say you can also well this thing is just a fabric so you could you know it's a good idea to put this on to uh, cover up your neck a little bit uh both in the hot and cold weather it helps in cold weather you same thing you wet this and that will help keep you cooler hot weather uh you or excuse me cold weather you put this on dry and it will help insulate your neck a little bit um have a couple of bungee cords left over it's always good to have a couple of bungee cords uh i think i showed you all my uh, riding gear all right so these are my uh two running shoes i'm not sure which one i'm gonna wear so these are my old cds uh this is what i normally commute with when i wear my ride my scooter um Actually, now even with my Zero, I, I wear these. Uh, but these are not waterproof. So they are cooler because they're not waterproof. And these are my newer boots that are supposed to replace these ones. But, you know, these ones have a long life left. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to wear these for Cannonball. The good thing about this, uh, this is waterproof. So, you know, if it does rain, my feet will be pretty dry. But at the same time, when it's hot, man, you know, waterproof boots gets really hot and sweaty when, when, it's, when it's hot. Because, you know, because that... that um that waterproofness that that that's what makes it uh hot and sweaty because it doesn't breathe as well obviously uh so i'm not sure uh if i want to wear these shoes or not um or wear these ones so i'm still kind of undecided uh so yeah so i'm not sure which one i want to wear and these ones i've i've worn a few times already and they're still pretty new um these are former former boots these are really nice uh nice boots got them on clearance from Revzilla. same with these ones i think i got these on clearance as well i was i tend to buy myself on clearance uh so again i'm kind of undecided if i want to wear these or not i might not uh so I, i'll end up with this you know it's gonna be i think it's gonna be pretty hot uh and i'm okay with with wearing this in the hot and if it's gonna be wet my feet will probably get wet and these things will get wet but channel star it's gonna get you know it's gonna dry out and it's gonna get hot so i'm I'm leaning towards wearing these ones right here um and, and they're all beat up too so if they get all messed up i really don't care you know just like my gloves i don't you know don't give a shit because they're so worn out these ones i've had these for um probably about 10 years as well or close to 10 years and these ones i just bought i think last year um okay so that's that let's uh look at the bike all right so here's the uh, bike all basically set up for the more or less uh how i'm gonna go so there's the has my uh my top box and my tires stacked up and my camel back on top uh i, I want to have the camel back right here so that way i could you know have my batteries so i could drink right there and, and i don't like wearing a camel back on my back because you know your back is all sweaty so i don't like that uh other cool thing about this is that you know i have the access to it here so that way uh, for example, if, if it's gonna rain, I could actually just open this up and get access to my rain gear. Or if it gets too hot, I could put my my insulation away here. And, you know, I have enough room. Uh, my gloves, etc. Everything that is in here that gets wet, I don't care about. I, you know, it doesn't really matter. No big deal. Stuff that, that needs to stay dry, I keep in the top box. And and uh, as far as the top box goes, everything stays in there, and I don't touch that. Uh, you know, in the middle of the ride, unless, you know, obviously, unless something breaks down or something, then I have to get through my tools. But, uh, but hopefully n nothing goes wrong uh, and hopefully I can limp it or, you know, it'll be okay until I get to, uh, to the end of the day. Uh, then I could, you know, I could work on that. But, uh, but again, I, I, I mentioned, uh, I have the, my, uh, my two, my flat repair kit down in here. Let's open that up real quick. So I have my flat repair kit in here, my uh, rope plug and uh, and the uh, reamer and the uh, rope plug tools, insert tool. So um, yeah, so that's there's my setup right there. Um, so so this is obviously when I leave tomorrow morning. This is how I'm gonna more or less be set up. Uh, by the time I get to Maine, my tires, front and rear tires, should be worn out. And so I have a front tire here and two rear tires. So, so you know, these, you know, the front and rear is going to go on and I have an extra uh, rear tire. So that should 
that extra rear tire should get me all the way back home again. Because uh, I think, I'm thinking uh, at least the, the ride back home, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to wear out one of these tires. Um, uh, and actually, I might even wear out this tire on the ride over there. And, and I might not even make it all the way to, to uh, Maine with this tire, even though it's pretty much brand new. It's pretty much brand new. I might not make it to Maine with that tire. So, so probably sometime before I get to Maine, I'm going to have to put on one of the rear tires here. And uh, and in the middle of the cannonball, I will you know one of whatever days, uh, uh, I will have to put uh, uh, the second rear tire on. So basically, by the time I get home, all three of these should be gone. Uh, and the only thing I would have left on top on top of this top box is my backpack, and I have to kind of rearrange the bungee cord a little bit, you know. So so that's always you know every time you you, you change something, things things don't you know because because you have. There, so you know, so you have a, uh, you have all the, whatever setup that way it is. But then you know, once uh, one tire goes, also it doesn't fit quite the same. Two tire goes, it doesn't fit quite the same, etc., etc. Et so, so that's one of the reasons why I like bungee cords because you could always kind of uh, rearrange it pretty easily. Uh, and, um, and yeah, so that's that's my setup. Um, let's see what else about this. I think that's it. Uh, I kind of like all the weight right there. Um, you know the rack when you when I bought this rack, it said you know it, had, it said some ridiculous small amount of weight. The reality is that you know in Asia, this rack, uh, you know the bike comes with with a rack and it also comes with a with a passenger seat. So the rack can hold more than than you know than what it claims. Um, so so all this weight here is no big deal. But one of the other things I like about having the weight in the back like this. Is that when I do do need to change the front tire, it lifts up, you know, it lifts up my uh, the front tire, so that way I don't have to uh, support it any anyway. So so it's good the way it is, and for it to you know, so right now the back tire is touching the ground. For the back tire to lift up, I basically I just have to take off all this stuff right here, and then the back tire, the front tire will be down, and the back tire will be will be lifted up. So it all fits, it all works out really well. So that way I don't have to have any extra stand or any extra tools or whatever. I can work with what what I got basically, um, so I'm trying to be as efficient as possible. And you notice I have some pannier racks right here. Originally, I was I uh, before I decided to, on using the top box. Originally, I was going to use a uh, some dry bags, pannier dry bags. But I was looking at you know what I had to carry, and because I had to carry all the tires, the pannier dry bags and stuff is you know it was going to be more difficult carrying those tires. With those bags because they're soft bags and you know less support whereas the hard bag is, is a lot is very supportive so that's why i decided to go with the hard bag i mean the the top box instead of the soft bags um let's see what else about this i think that's about it uh yeah so i'm pretty much ready to go all i need to do is just put my laundry in here i'm gonna take all this stuff off and put my you know my laundry in here and i'll be ready to go tomorrow morning you know seven o'clock all right, that's it. Thanks for watching.